The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is the most visited of any national park in the United States. Located on the border of the states of Tennessee and North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains themselves are a mountain chain in the southern section of the Appalachian Mountains. Part of the famous Appalachian Trail, which stretches from Georgia to Maine, goes through the Smoky Mountains, bringing various thru-hikers into this area. Despite being so heavily visited, a majority of that human traffic is via a few main roads, leaving much of these mountains very remote and only accessible on foot via hiking trails. The Smokies are part of the Appalachian Temperate Rainforest, which creates a very unique and biodiverse environment that supports a wide variety of species. Some believe that includes Sasquatch. Recently in July, I was down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee for the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Conference, where I would be speaking and hanging out with some of the Small Town Monsters crew. However, before the event, I decided to go on a solo backpacking night out in the Smoky Mountains, heading to a remote and less crowded section of the National Park on the North Carolina side. Hiking to the top of Klingman's Dome. Highest peak in the Smokies, 6,000 something feet. Unfortunately, this place is a human zoo. Okay, I'm here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Really excited to be in this area. I haven't been to the Smoky Mountains since uh, probably when I was in high school. I did a kind of three week survival backpacking trip here in the Smokies. Totally different season, it was November. Right now it is July, very humid, very hot out. But uh, the idea here is that I'm gonna backpack into an area, into like a backcountry spot a few miles in and hang out for the night. I have a limited amount of time here, so I'm gonna spend just the one night here initially in the Smokies. I've picked a spot that's a little bit more isolated in terms of the national park. I mean, this is the most visited national park in the US. It's free, so people can just drive through between Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and Cherokee, North Carolina. So there's a lot of through traffic, but this section I've picked, it's near some pretty good water sources. We've got, and I've got a river right behind me here, got lakes, uh, lots of different stuff. I think it's a little bit more isolated, doesn't get as much traffic as the main section, Klingman's Dome, that whole area. The Smoky Mountains is huge, so there's just so much space here, but I think this area should be pretty interesting. Hopefully, you know, if I'm out there tonight alone, something might be interested and want to check it out. So uh, I guess I'm gonna kind of see what this area is like and what it looks like.
disorienting, a very long tunnel. There's people kind of right there, but it sounds like they're right behind me, even though they're not exactly really close to them. down there. I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but this whole tunnel seems to be defeated up. Man, this would be the worst place to be at night. That would be pretty terrifying, I think. So I'm almost out. At another end here. It's probably going to be disorienting being back in the light after being in the dark for a few minutes now. the tunnel and onwards we go the thing I've been excited to check out down here in the Smokies is just how how different it is to the northern Appalachians where I'm used to hiking and backpacking in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, the Green Mountains of Vermont, the uh, mountain ranges in Maine. There's a lot more pine up there, I feel like. Down here, it's actually technically, this is a temperate rainforest. I believe this area is classified as a temperate rainforest. It's very lush down here. I mean, there's a lot of rain. It just has a sort of most jungle-like feel to it. Check out this guy just walking in the trail. <sighs> Whew. Even though it doesn't feel that humid in the air, I mean, it just, you, you can, you can feel it in other ways. Just how, how sweaty you get and how, how just damp the whole environment here is. Find this area to look so cool. Well, as I've gotten lower in elevation, seemingly closer to the lake, it does feel a lot more humid down here in this sort of lush valley here with tall grass across the little creek here. So I had seen some kind of impression sort of right off the trail here, just into, over into this creek. Now that was just me right there, basically stepping like that, but right up front in front of it, I have another impression here. Now that could be a deteriorated bear track. It keeps going in here. I know this area has a lot of black bear. Nothing really else obvious telling me what it is. Hopefully down by the lake we can find some prints of something. Now something I do remember about hiking in the Smokies is how they're kind of considered to be the green tunnel. Well, at least the Appalachian Mountain range, the whole kind of Appalachian Trail, sort of known as the green tunnel. But I remember here in the Smokies all these huge rhododendron, I mean almost trees how big they are, and it's green year-round, which is pretty interesting. I just made it to the little backcountry camp I'm going to be staying at here uh, for tonight. I'm going to probably set up camp now, maybe relax a little bit, and then explore the area, go check out the lake, check out the rest of the surrounding area. Got a nice little creek here. There's a hill up there, and another one on this side. We got two hills, kind of in a little valley here. Looks like they've already got a bear 
system here where I can just hang it up on this kind of pulley system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. set up bear bag up in the tree looks like we've got a helicopter up in the air sending the choppers after me <laughs> just kidding who knows what's going on it's actually an airplane not a helicopter just too tired to tell the difference can't even tell there's a camp in there but anyway beautiful beautiful area all around here lush it's starting to cool down a little bit not as humid and muggy so I'm really hoping tonight will be better <laughs> well, I see an area like this where it just kind of goes up the hill and you've got rhododendron everywhere you could easily be hiding in those bushes and no one would even know pretty much on either side. So it's pretty intriguing about this whole area. Just up and down ravines and ridges and you've got water flowing between. Wow, so here's the lake. So the water level is a little high. When I looked up photos of this place, it, it looked like it could drain pretty low, but I, I guess in the summertime it fills up. I was hoping to originally maybe check out some of the shoreline, look for tracks, bears, anything that might be in the area, but uh, not much, not much shoreline. As you can see, there's some trees that are in the water, so not much of that's going to happen. When it comes to alleged Sasquatch encounters in this area, there are plenty of them reported to the BFRO and elsewhere online, both in the Tennessee and North Carolina sections of the National Park, and areas surrounding the park. There have been quite a few sightings just south of where I was, outside of Bryson City, North Carolina. One in which a couple was driving and observed a large Sasquatch near the Little Tennessee River and described it as such. Quote, it was at least eight to nine feet tall, covered in long black hair all over its body. It was massive. We were about 100 yards away and nothing was obstructing our view, end quote. Another report from 1975, from some backpackers in the National Park itself, described discovering a 12 to 14 inch footprint that was two to three inches deep with five distinct toes visible. There was one stranger encounter I came across online that caught my attention, as it was not far from where I currently was, and it reads as follows. Quote, I have spent a lot of time on this trail, heading down to the lake as I fly fish Noland Creek. One day, a couple of years ago in November, I was walking down the trail to the lake. It was a very clear day, with moderate temperatures and absolutely still. About halfway to the lake, the proverbial terrible smell occurs. It's like a cross between a dead animal and a porta potty. It was very strong. This was a holler between two ridges. As I come around this bend, I see what I can only describe is to imagine a person with a leaf blower walking in one direction and the leaf blower being held directly behind him. This phenomenon moves very, very quickly up the ridge with leaves being blown in the opposite direction. The weird thing is that as it moves up the ridge, I can see small trees moving and a few breaking. It was almost like something invisible was heading up the steep ridge very quickly. I could easily watch this phenomenon moving up the huge ridge until it was out of sight. There was nothing there other than these leaves blowing. 
Imagine a cartoon that when the roadrunner takes off, there is a cloud of leaves behind him. I'm sure you know what a whirly gig is, a small ground level tornado. This, that was not. Something was propelling these leaves in a very distinct direction and very quickly. As soon as this occurred, the smell went away. I don't know what to make of this encounter, but I found it intriguing given how close I was to where it took place. It seems to be one of many strange encounters in these mountains. Amazing how dark it seems in here. I don't know if it reflects properly on the camera, but it's about 6.20 p.m. This is what it's looking like in here. My camp is essentially on the other side of that, that big hill right in front of me. At least I think. Where the trail goes. So, I'm getting pretty hungry. I'm gonna cook up some dinner now before I start to do a fire. Just nothing fancy, just a backpacker's meal out of a bag, basically. I feel like eating these meals normally you know, and civilization just doesn't cut it, but out here it's a, it's a nice treat. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking the AGM uh, ASP Micro TM 160 and I've paired it to kind of a Wi-Fi. It has its own Wi-Fi network, and so I can run it right off my phone, which is really cool. I can then, you know, remotely use it have it set up on the tripod. What I think I'm going to do is probably, depending on what's happening tonight, I mean, I'll put it out either way. I can even run external power on it, but I would essentially just put it out outside the tent, and then I can check on it every once in a while. I can just have it rolling, either till the battery dies or with external power, and just have it keep running just in case there's something that happens in the area. You know, I could put it up higher, I could do whatever, but what's really cool is you're just having this ability to basically have a monitor, so I'm not having to look through the little lens, which is fine, but this just seems like it works okay. So I'm gonna kind of mess around with this a little bit here. Just changing my shirt and uh, branch just randomly came down right over here. Didn't see anything over here kind of fell over. Right on this, this branch right here. See it on the ground. Just fell over. No particular reason. There's obviously nothing in the area that I can see or hear or anything, so seems like a natural occurrence. It's one of those things, if I was inside my tent and I heard that, I probably would be thinking there's something out here. Some sort of critter or air or something. So it's interesting when you're able to kind of disprove something on the spot. Some kind of critter moving on the hill up there. You could hear branch snaps and that sort of thing. Probably bust out the thermal here and see if I can't see anything. I don't know how big or small it is. Can't see anything, it's just too thick. I can hear whatever it is, it's moving right up in there. You can hear it moving. I had to guess, say something deer sized, perhaps. 
Sounds a little bit on the larger side, so I'm thinking m most likely deer. Perhaps. Okay. So, just kind of uh, hanging out at camp, talking to myself, talking to the camera. <laughs> Just wanted to talk about uh, some of the lights that I bring out here. It's not really something I usually do, but might as well talk about some gear. Um, for a handheld light, I've got this Surefire light. Uh, it's really cool. It's nice and portable. It's got two brightness settings. It's really bright, so the amount of light it puts out for a handheld is great. The only downside is it doesn't have a clip. So you can put it in your pocket or hang it on something and it'll be loose around there. But other than that, it's pretty solid. I mean, you can mount it to a weapon. You could do whatever with it. It's it's pretty versatile. It's got, you know, serrated kind of front covering there as well. Uh, I feel like I could drop it a million times and not, not wreck it. So that's for a handheld. For a headlamp, I have this basic kind of just Cabela's headlamp. It's pretty neat because it rotates up and down. There's three bulbs inside. There's two white ones and a smaller red one. So you've got one mode, two mode, three mode, and four as bright as it goes. So pretty good output for just a headlamp. And uh, what I like is actually it's got a red mode built right in. And we really like red because out in the woods at night, red doesn't affect your, um, your night vision as much as white light does. So when walking around in the woods at night, we prefer to run red. You know, nothing, no frills, pretty basic. Takes three triple A's, and that's about it. So that's for the headlamp, and then for a sort of lantern, tent light, camp light, I've got this Streamlight Siege AA. Uh, it's really neat. You've got a bunch of different modes. You know, first setting, second setting, and third setting. So pretty bright, uh, and it's actually cool. It's got a red mode, too. You have to hold the button down, and it goes to red. That's kind of cool. It also does a red flashing mode. So if you need, you know, maybe for rescue situations or you can't see someone, you want to let them know where you're at, you've got red um, as well. And it'll, it'll automatically stay on that red until you change it back. Essentially, you have to change it back to white. Uh, and then it's got this clip up at the top so you can hang it, which is really nice. That folds down to the side. And then the bottom as well has a clip. And this is actually a little carabiner. So you can hang this and hang it this way and do whatever. Really cool they have that both those options. Takes three triple A's, or double A's, excuse me. Uh, very solid. I feel like I could throw this thing and drop it around a bunch and it would be totally fine along with the rest of these. I mean, with maybe the exception of the headlamp. But I wouldn't probably be tossing it around. But these two are solid. And these are just, you know, three essential lights that I have out here, especially because I'm alone, but also because I'm backpacking. I don't want to be killing myself bringing in bigger lanterns and just adding on that weight. These three guys alone, the amount of light they output is amazing. And for the size and portability, just a little uh, talk on flashlights, I guess. Given how damp the environment was due to the humidity, I didn't run the fire for very long as I hadn't packed out any drier wood. Well, it's starting to get pretty, pretty dark out here. Sadly, with no fire. Um, I'm kind of just going to be sitting out here in the dark. <laughs> so I think I'm going to just sit in the tent for a little bit and just kind of listen. Because I do hear movement. Like there's stuff moving around. It, critters are coming out. Uh, but, you know, give it, given that it's almost 9 o'clock, you know, maybe that'll start something up critter-wise. So I'll just kind of hang out for a bit, listen, and then see if I can't hear anything and maybe then mess around with the thermal. So I'm just chilling inside the tent. Hearing movement out there, I'm seeing fireflies. Heard something go crash through the trees over there. So I might start to deploy the thermal. All right, well, here's how I had to rig this up in order to have the power bank coming off of it 
the issue here is that where that tripod mount is so close to the external power port, I have no mount that's small enough to work. So I've essentially just put a tripod around this, wrapped it around, so I have something to be able to hold it into the canteen with the cord on there. There you have it. So that's what's going to be hanging out outside, just, just past the tent. Alright, we've got our thermal surveillance system rigged up. Uh, checking it now on the phone. And it looks to be... Oh, uh, can't see if there's a nice shot. Looks to be pretty good. That's the shot we're going to get. We'll get the ground level and those woods up there. So, that can just roll and... Alright, well, what's cool is this is what I'm essentially able to do. I have a picture here. What's going on with my thermal, and if I want to, I could zoom in a little bit. Four times zoom on there. Let's say there's something in the background. Also change the uh, the light settings depending on what I'm in. This seems to work. Right now I'm on um, red hot. But I've got the combined. I can change this guy too. So we've got three. A little hard to tell. Trees get pretty grainy, but uh, black hot as well. Now that's way overblown. Maybe it's just the camera. But it's a pretty neat feature. Be able to just kind of mess with this. Right now I'm keeping it on that um, red hot. I just kind of like that mode. The cicadas were extremely loud for most of the night, and it was difficult to hear much of anything. Before I went to sleep, however, I decided to do a loud vocalization, because why not? <coughs> After falling asleep for a while, at one point I was woken up by what sounded like an object hitting the tent. In my suddenly half-awake state, in the moment, it sounded like I could hear something shuffling away across the creek. A little while later, right as I was about to fall back asleep, it happened again. So this is the second time this has happened. Uh, first time I wasn't sure what, what it was. I was woken up essentially by something hitting, hitting the side of the tent where my head is. Um, it woke me up from a sleep and it sounded like something moved out there. That was the first time it happened. That was at around 12.30 and it's about 1.09 in the morning right now. And I had just kind of drifted off and again something hits right here in front of my head. I didn't hear anything so I don't know. I mean, it's Falling, uh, what it is, but uh, kind of actually annoying. It's like right, right as I was about to drift off to sleep, but, you know, I, don't, I don't really know what's going on. Just thought I'd uh, kind of say what was happening. got out of the tent. It's about 9 a.m. Slept okay. You know, as comfortable as you can tent camping. Never the best type of sleep, but last night was weird. Thought I heard a lot of weird noises out here. Possible knocks. I don't know. Maybe I was imagining some of it, but I filmed my reaction to something hitting the tent. It happened multiple times. I filmed it after the second time, which I just thought was was odd. Because uh, the first time it woke me up out of my sleep and I felt, you know, I felt it hit the tent and then I heard rustling in the bushes, kind of to the left, to where the creek is. And the second time, 
that, so that happened around 12.30. The second time was around 1 in the morning. And I was just dozing off and something again whacked the side of the tent. Now, was it something being thrown? Was it something falling? Perhaps. I mean, was it a toad jumping up on the tent? Maybe. This morning I found a toad in my boot as I was getting ready to put him on. Good thing I, I saw him before I put it on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had audio running pretty much all night. We had the, the thermal obviously pointed out here. But I did get a feeling like I heard a lot of weird noises, just stuff moving and stuff falling, and that's just probably normal forest sounds. But maybe we'll be able to find something interesting on the audio. I don't know. While the overnight audio is largely inconclusive, as there are various ways to explain those sounds, I still find it important to record audio, just in case you do capture something interesting. Whatever I was woken up by could have been a variety of things, including something falling from a tree, or even a bug or toad hitting the tent near my head. There are a variety of ways to explain it without it being Sasquatch related. But in the moment, in a half-asleep state, in the middle of nowhere all alone, it's hard for the mind to not race towards the conclusion that it is indeed some lumbering large ape creature in the bushes messing with me. Maybe that is what it was. I'll simply never know. I'm going to pack up camp, maybe look around a little bit, and then hit the road. So i got to get going. So as I look around here, this is the side where my head was in the tent. I don't see anything on the ground. I mean, I don't know, it's hard to tell. I mean, there's a couple of rocks, but they look like they've been there. There's a small one here, I don't know, I mean, like that. I'm not sure, I mean, it could have been a stick. Could have been a toad, like I said. Really hard to know what it was. Well, of course, not rolling any audio. No camera rolling, but I I just heard what sounded like a knock right from that direction as I was fiddling around in my tent packing stuff up. Alright, well, I'm gonna hit the uh, hit the trail here. I mean, I've, I've looked around a little bit on the ground, but it's so hard to notice anything. <laughs> It was great to get a brief glimpse of what the Smokies were like. I wish I could have spent more time out there alone in that area and explored it more thoroughly. But even just being out there for one night was interesting for me. 
The Smokies certainly have potential habitat for something that wants to stay hidden, and it has a wide variety of areas for something to recede into. If I were to return to the Smokies again, I would probably pick a cooler time such as in the fall, where some of the dense underbrush might be less of a factor.